Hi, and welcome to a bit of an unusual edition of The Sync. Today we are on with Alexei Miller, who is the Managing Director of Data Art. And today, Alexei, you are on the receiving end of questions. So hi, and thank you for being here. I guess my, my first question to you would be, how are IT companies actually navigating through today's labor market? So, Anya, first of all, thank you for the uh, great question. And before I go into the behind the scenes, the dirty secrets of the industry, I want to say that things are indeed good. Demand is strong for IT services. Many firms, including Datart, are benefiting from this, this demand. Corporations, organizations all over the world are investing aggressively in technology. It is seen as a safe place to invest, as a profitable place to invest. So uh, firms like ours should not be complaining. Of course, you're right, there is more than meets the eye in terms of how to actually make it happen. And the fundamental thing that has changed in the last year or two, perhaps, is this very strong but hardly visible to the outsider shift of the balance between balance of power between those who pay, the customers, and the workers, the people who put together software that the entire world uh, needs. Gone are the days when um, the buyer dominated the conversation, where the amount of money you paid would determine uh, the total choice of resources that you have, architectural decisions, technical choices, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the two sides, the supplier and the buyer, are at least in an equal partnership. They have to make those decisions together. And increasingly, the buyers have to take into account suppliers or workers' priority. That manifests itself in terms of costs. Obviously, labor costs are going up all over the world from the US, UK, and many of the overseas markets. Um, it manifests itself in terms of who makes technical decisions. Oftentimes, the level of technology knowledge and expertise with the supplier teams is greater than that on the, on the buyer side. And, they have to make those decisions together or even trust the other party to make some of those decisions for them and so on and so forth. So this shift in balance is something that, um, that shows in virtually every element of a life of an IT services com company such as ours in how we explain ourselves in client markets and labor markets, how we hire people, train them, how we work to retain them, how we put together client teams and organize the whole customer service process. Obviously, the, the current situation is great for tech workers um, and the the employees, but there must be some downside. So it obviously increases the costs. Is there anything else? Well, I don't think there are downsides for the workers, and there shouldn't be, because if uh, if we in business have been saying for years that technology is the business now, then the power should be with those who put together technology. And it is only appropriate that those who have invested years of their lives into um, learning technologies and have experimented and spent countless sleepless nights uh, on um, honing their skills should get the benefit the benefit today. I don't think there's a downside to the workers, therefore. Companies such as Datart have to work harder to make sure that they can attract the right people, keep them, provide the right structure in which they can uh, do what they do what they do best. Um, there's nothing unusual in it in, in terms of, I mean, business always changes. So this is the ma massive change that we have to deal with now, but there were other changes before. So fundamentally, life goes on. Um, you just have to pay attention to things that maybe previously you took for uh, for granted. And what's interesting is, uh, you know, things things like employee morale and loyalty and making sure that you are watching for competitive uh, labor market trends, et cetera, et cetera. What's making it difficult or more difficult than before is that you have to do all of these things um, while, while the requirements in terms of compliance, regulation, security are as strong as ever. So you have, for example, all of the IT services suppliers are investing substantial resource into building uh, what we call remote teams, where people can work from their homes or from uh, shared offices all, all over the place. But you cannot do it in a way that will jeopardize security. 
you have to create technology systems, organizational systems to make sure that client information, client processes are, are protected. It sounds like it's now is the time for companies to hold on to the talent with both hands, right? Um, Always time for that. Now, particularly so when you can't uh, ensure that the employee turnover is low and the supply of new resources is high, you are losing opportunities. And in this business, business is very portable in this, in this uh, sector. If you can't do a certain job, someone else will. So you have to move fast. You have to take some risks. And um, you cannot assume that both clients and employees will stay with you for years and years just because you were a good company before. You have to continue to be a good company today, a good employer, good service provider, and make investments so you remain so in the future. Alexey, and given such a huge demand that is on IT right now, uh, there must be some supply shortages. So that means that companies like ours um, must be saying no to new businesses. Is that true? And if so, what, what's the way out here? Well, business books have been telling us for decades that saying no to certain types of businesses is a good idea in the good times, the bad times, because you, as a business, you need to focus. You need to understand what kind of opportunity you can best take advantage of and when you better, better stay away. So fundamentally, this, this hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. Saying no to business because you don't have enough supply, enough product or enough, enough capacity is extremely painful. I personally find it one of the most difficult things to do in those rare situations when we do have have to do it but it's also incredibly motivating i mean i can speak from personal experience you lose one or two opportunities because you, you simply cannot find the find the resources and you work extra hard so you never have to do it again so in in, in some in some ways uh saying no you should not get carried away with saying no it's not a good thing it's something you're forced to do sometimes but when you do like i said uh you really want you never have to do it again and just to come back to your previous point, you you mentioned remote work and how it obviously upended the 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 labor market and how tech companies work. And you mentioned that there are new things to keep in mind now. So compliance, security. What are what, what would you say are some of the other things for clients and investors to keep in mind these days? If you could just like recap and give us a bit more. I think uh, a lot of clients, there's some, some old habits that clients, for example, have to gradually start getting rid of. For example, um, even the offshore outsourcing space, it was kind of preferred by uh, many clients, not all, but many, that teams are co-located in one, one location. So they would say, I want to pick a city, I want to pick a room, and all of my quote-unquote team sits in that, in that same, same room. In this post-COVID age, that is hardly feasible. I mean, right now in many places around the world, it's outright impossible, but even when COVID goes, goes by, I think uh, a lot of organizations will find that people just don't want to work that way. And clients will have a choice. Do we accept the new reality? We try to stick to the old way of, of, of thinking. And I think many of them will find that um, trying to stick to the old way of thinking uh, for, for legacy reasons will be very limiting. And ultimately, uh, clients who do not evolve their thinking and do not open up to new uh, ways of working will, will lose in this competitive game for, uh, for talent. The other thing that is very important for customers to realize is it, things like team morale, loyalty, motivation to work on certain projects are no longer only other people's business. We as a service provider and clients have a shared responsibility to invest in the teams that work for clients. Uh, make sure they're comfortable working between themselves. Make sure they're comfortable working or interested working on this project. Ensure that they have enough time and support to continue their training. Get access to new technologies, new interesting op opportunities. Clients who understand that they have a role to play in this will ultimately win. And we as a service provider are, are, are here to guide them because we know exactly what needs to be done. We're happy to invest in this aggressively and we have been doing it for years and especially in the last few years, but um, it's, a joint, it's a joint effort. It's really a three-way uh, conversation most of the time between the client, the service provider, and the individual employee or group of employees. Does that com conversation take place from the get-go at the very first interaction with the client so that it should 
it should it doesn't always but it should i one of the one of the most um you know uncomfortable things that i like to say to clients who are just signing up with us uh very early on happy moment we're signing contracts and so on and sometimes i, I like to uh, you know bring the mood down a little bit by saying okay client we're, we're, we're happy now but let's imagine 12 months later uh we've, we've done the work and it's a complete mess it's an utter failure you've spent the money you didn't get what you wanted hopefully this will never happen but let's imagine let's analyze what brought us to this uh to this result like what can we prevent from happening today so we don't have to have this, that conversation in, in reality let's uh, pre-mortem as opposed to post-mortem it's helpful sometimes although um uncomfortable for many and oftentimes when we go through these uh, pre-mortem efforts, uh, things like, you know, technology are usually not the highest priority. Usually things fall apart in this hypothetical analysis because the team wasn't loyal enough or motivated enough. They didn't stay together or the project management uh, infrastructure wasn't organized properly. So it, it's a whole bunch of things that you would call the intangibles. The material things are relatively easy. It's the immaterial, the intangible things that usually make or break uh, successful successful projects. So, yes, um, this, these are conversations that should happen frequently and regularly. It actually sounds like there is a lot more communication going on right now between all parties involved, making sure everybody's on the same page, on track. Is that correct? Is there more? <laughs> It is, but it's a funny point because uh, at DataArt we've always been like that, and lot of, lots, lots of people, some employees, but lot, certainly many clients were like, "You guys are crazy. You talk so much. You over communicate. <laughs> you overcompensate for your remote manner of working. Uh, this is not efficient." And now we had, we all, the world had to wait until COVID to see if this actually works and this will continue to to work. So in funny ways, DataArt did not have to adjust so many of its management processes because they were COVID proof uh, from, from the get-go about 15 years early, you might say, but it was helpful, certainly. So finally paid off, huh? Paid off uh, nicely, yes. Uh, Alexei, one more question I want to ask you. Uh, would you leave us with some predictions? What do you think the immediate future holds? Well, if I was in the if I was any good with predictions, I would be in the investment business and not in technology business. So that tells you something that I that my predictions should be taken with a huge grain of grain of salt. But um, I, I think I think you could say that markets are a little bit out of balance right now. Everyone is uh, trying to invest very aggressively. There's a lot of money available for technology. There's a lot of um, labor markets are unsettled, if you if you will. Labor cost acceleration. There's a lot of change going on, and whenever you have these turbulent periods, they usually last a few years, and then there's a rel period of relative relative calm. I have no idea when uh, that that period of relative calm, when things go, go back into balance, will happen. It feels like the overall trend towards higher technology spend has no end in sight. This will continue and grow because there's literally nothing else that provides the same level of return on investment in the corporate world as investment in technology. This is literally the single best thing you can do. So that will not change. But when the laws of supply and demand come back into balance, my, my sense is another year or two or three. It, it, it's, it's not forever because this turbulence is um, both very exciting and quite tiring. Well, Alexei, it's been very interesting. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks for the great questions. Cheers.